we've moved from uh, a discipline which was rather more influenced by the artistic side of design, being that it comes out of uh, design colleges. Um, it's now much more focused on the commercial aspects. And I think we're at a turning point whereby design will be seen as one of the underlying disciplines that uh, in business generally. And therefore, many more people in business will be considered designers, not people who principally deal with design in the traditional sense. There, there were those stars, there were prima donnas, and they would say, take it or leave it. We're not compromising on things. But um, uh, I think there was quite a lot of timidity as well. I think what is happening is that you are getting uh, designers who are getting more experienced at dealing with non-design people and dealing with non-design problems and they're building up some expertise in that area. And therefore, there is a more equal discussion uh, about problems, what the problems are, first of all, the business problems are, whether design can solve those problems or whether some other discipline should be brought in, and then how design can solve those uh, problems. I think when I first started, which was, I entered the design field in 1971 full time, um, there was incomprehension between the two sides. And that's why I started my research program, because I found that we who were working in design practices, independent design practices, were speaking a certain kind of language, had certain mentality and, and approach. And people in business were um, uh, speaking a very different language and had a different mentality and so on. And in fact, when I found that there was this difference in language, I, I uh, um, uh, did a survey which was called Design Projects Are Difficult to Manage Because, and there were a number of statements. And I ran it in this country, in North America, and in Europe. And uh, extraordinarily, the findings when they came in indicated, and these were statistically significant findings, that managers, clients generally, accepted that the principal problems with managing design projects were in their court. They were centered around their shortcomings. It wasn't that the designers were coming up with airy-fairy solutions, didn't understand the hardness, commercial profit motives of a business, but it was that the clients were unprepared. They didn't realize the potential of using design resources and so on. And that was a huge change um, in the way design and designers ought to have been looked at. Unfortunately, these things, you produce the findings and they're forgotten fairly quickly. There's a lot of talk about design management, which is in fact not talk about design management. The term is used, but the substance isn't there. And I think it is evident in the conference here that a lot of papers have design management in their titles. And when you listen to the, the speakers, you find that actually um, it isn't really about design management. It might be about new product development. It might be about other aspects of uh, you know, innovation and things like that. So the one aspect that I would look at is uh, what I consider to be the core of design management, and that is design responsibility and leadership. What does it mean, for example, for a board director to say that I am responsible for design, I am the ultimate responsible for design in my company, and I demonstrate that responsibility in the following ways, okay? And of course, one of the ways in which they demonstrate that is by leading. Uh, now, leading could be from the front, and it can be from the back. They could be leading very quietly by saying to people, I don't want you to come forward with a proposal for new investment at a board meeting unless you have consulted fully your colleagues, and that includes the design professionals, and it might be inside our company and outside our company. 
And therefore, what I want is that if we are to approve a proposal that you put forward to the board, we press the green button, we know that everybody's been consulted and everybody's ready to go. You don't then, once you had approval, start consulting and then you find that there are discrepancies in people's views and how you're going to approach the thing and so on. In practice, the best results are gained when you've got a very strong client and a very strong designer. They're, they're sparking off each other. You know, if you've got a strong client and a rather timid designer, the client is going to dominate and therefore the designer is not going to be able to get, you know, to produce his or her best work. But when you have people of equal, uh, and in many ways there are of similar mentality, they may be coming from different areas, but there's sufficient common ground between them, suddenly sparks fire, you know, and they get to a place that neither of them thought was possible. They're way beyond what they thought. When they started, when they came, first came together, they thought, oh, this is what we're going to do. This is what I'm going to ask this chap to do. This, is, this chap says, this is what I think I can do, given what I've heard of the problem. But in the end, they come out in a completely different space. It may be that the problem is completely transformed. It's a different problem. They end up by saying, I know we started by saying this, but because of the conversation we had, during the briefing process, in getting to know the problem, we actually decided it's not one problem, it's several problems, and actually our priority is something very different. And therefore, the, pro the project is completely transformed into something different. I think conferences are always useful. The danger is that you, and, and I raised that in my keynote speech yesterday as well, that diversity is wonderful, diversity of views is wonderful. And I have no problem with the discussing diversity of views on design management. I have my particular views, other people have different ones. The trouble is that if you're going to establish a rigorous discipline that is credible to outsiders, in other words, to outside the design professions, then there's got to be a core consensus on the core of the discipline. The people outside have got to know that there is agreement about what we are speaking about. And therefore, there is a core of things that they've always got to consider. And then, given the particular circumstances of their organization, there are peculiarities that they would then address as they see fit. And we in the profession, if you could, uh, we who have studied or are studying design management, and I consider myself still a student in the field, even after all these years, um, we should be able to encompass all these peculiarities that are raised by, let's call it, our clients. Um, we shouldn't be stumbled by anything that they can, because there's a huge diversity out there of different organizations, different approaches, different mentalities, and so on. And yet, our discipline should be solid enough to be able to deal with them. Now, I don't get the impression with the majority of people, particularly in academe, that they're doing the work and we're getting to that kind of goal. I believe very strongly um, that the lead should come from practice. I'm a practitioner, I'm not an academic, though I have published extensively. The conference certainly helps. I mean, I found it useful being here. Um, let me put it this way, it's not only in listening to what other people say, but it's in your reactions to what people say. Force you, me, to double-check my own views.